Good evening, and welcome to Mid Valley Bible Church's virtual prayer meeting for Wednesday, December 22nd. My name is Doug Hornock, and I'm the pastor here at Mid Valley. Before I share a brief devotional with you this evening and we go to prayer, I want to mention three important items. First, I want to encourage you to be praying for Paul Jackson. Paul and his wife Barb, until a few years ago, were longtime attenders here at Mid Valley. When Paul retired from the phone company a couple of years ago, they moved to Idaho. Last Monday, Paul was in his driveway clearing snow, and he slipped and hit his head doing severe brain damage. And as of Tuesday, when I'm recording this, he's unconscious and unresponsive in the hospital. Earlier today, I spoke with Paul's wife, Barb, and their son, Andrew, and they both said that things did not look encouraging. The family is going to have to be making some very difficult decisions shortly. And so I want to encourage you to pray for God to intervene and intervene and bring about a miracle. And we'll certainly keep you informed. I also want to mention that this will be our last devotional and prayer time for the balance of this calendar year until January 5th, 2022. We're going to take a break for just one week, and so there'll be no devotional next Wednesday, December 29th. I'm going to be out of town in Grand Junction, and the Delgados, who do the technical side of these prayer times, are in California. And so we're going to take a break for just one week. And the final thing is I want to encourage you to pray for and participate in our Candlelight Christmas Eve service this Friday at 6 o'clock. It's going to be a wonderful service. It's going to be an excellent opportunity for outreach, and so I want to encourage you to take advantage of that. The last week of December is when we celebrate Christmas as well as the beginning of a new year. As I was thinking about this and wondering what I might share my thoughts were directed to a verse of scripture in Paul's letter to the Christians at Colossae, where in the opening chapter, Paul talks about Jesus Christ. And he says that he's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. He's the one who created all things and holds all things together. He's the head of the church and he's the firstborn from the dead. Now, Jesus Christ, whose birth we are celebrating during this Christmas, is all of those things. And because all of those things are true, Paul says that he is then to have supremacy in everything. Some translations say, so that in everything he might be preeminent. That word means first place. And I want to suggest that as we celebrate Christmas and are going to begin a new year, that we sort of make that our unofficial theme for the new year. That in all things, Christ would be preeminent. That he would have supremacy. That he would have first place. In other words, that Christ doesn't just get a spot on the podium of our life. He doesn't just get a ribbon. That he's not tied with anyone or anything else. But that he's given first place in everything always and forever. And the reason Paul says that is because Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in everything, he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. You know, if ever there were a passage of scripture that piles up phrase after phrase, sentence after sentence, to tell us why Christ deserves to be preeminent, why he deserves first place, it's this passage. Now, if Christ is preeminent, that means by extension, then that we're not. No pastor is preeminent. If Christ is first place, it means that no 
politics are preeminent, no mission or missionary, no line item in the budget. It means that America, or whatever country you happen to be from, is not first place. It means that no ministry, no matter how big or how proud we may be of it, is to be first place. Only Christ is to be preeminent. And please notice that he's preeminent not just in some things, but in everything. That means he's not just a preeminent person on Sundays. It's not just when we gather in our building on Sundays that Christ gets first place. It's not simply when it's convenient. It's not just when you're young and desperate for help or when you're old and looking to life after death. Paul says here that at every stage of our life, Christ is to be preeminent. He's to have first place. And that's an issue that's not up for election or debate. In everything, Christ must be preeminent. And I am very thankful that while every church has its share of sinners and saints, their histories of highs and lows, by God's grace, over the sweep of 68 years, Christ has been given first place at Mid Valley Bible Church. I think that's been our history. And it's my prayer for the new year that it will be that in the present as well as in the future. From the songs that we sing, the ministries that we do, the missionaries we support, the preaching that comes from our pulpit, I pray and I hope that you will join me in praying that in everything Christ would be preeminent. And so as we come and celebrate Christmas and the beginning of a new year in a little more than a week, let's resolve by God's grace and through his Holy Spirit's enabling strength that in everything, not only in our personal life, but in our church here at Mid Valley, that Christ would be preeminent. And so with that reminder before us, let's now go to prayer.